Awo Shalom Rastafari. This is Wendem Yadon of the Lion of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty. Now, we've been in a series. We just started an inspired series, Caesar versus Christ, or Caesar's Antichrist versus the King of Kings Christ, or the true Black Christ, the true um, Bain Ha Elohim. Chayim, the true son of God. You know what I'm saying? Um, the other Christ, as, as the Bible speaks on that, you know, another, another um, so-called uh, Jesus, right? Another so-called gospel. And another so-called spirit. Now, Corinthians is very interesting in more ways than one. You know what I'm saying? Corinthians has a lot of very important matter the whole scripture does but in speaking about like right here you know um where 11 is uh, chapter 11 what does chapter 11 mean chapter 11 means um bankruptcy in the world right chapter 11 is what they call um bankruptcy right bankruptcy it was very clear that this world is um is 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 bankrupt Right, this world is not just corrupt, but is bankrupt. Now, what we what, what we had left off with is we were speaking about um, Revelation chapter three, verse um, nine, and we were speaking about the difference of of like who's a Jew and 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 the Jews that Yeshua says he will come and make to bow down at his true people's feet and recognize that God has loved them. You know, so there's a difference between the so-called Rothschild Jews, right? The difference between the Rothschild Jews and the Torah Jews. And this is the most interesting thing. And the videos that are out there, they keep kind of taking them down or something. And, you know, what's interesting is you have Jews who oppose the the Rothschild, European white Jews, uh, Hasidim, 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 and remind I and I to lecture on that word Hasida, Hasid and Hasida. If you go to um, an S C H um, A S I D, some places it's translated as Holy One, but the real link with that is it's a certain type of bird, a stork, almost like the ibis, almost like Tahuti, and there's a very interesting connection right there as well. In our books, we use that particular symbol of Tehuti writing, uh, Tehuti or David, if you if you can receive it, or Do, Do, the Beloved, right there. But it's interesting how this all now connects. We have the Hasidim, right? And you have many of the ha- ha- Hasidim who oppose the state of Israel, or what we call Jezreel, right? And we left off on the hour, speaking about the hour, of um, temptation, right? The hour of temptation. We've got a couple of matters right here. We're going to continue with the, the Caesar's Antichrist versus um, the black Messiah or the black Christ, the true Christ of the Bible in spirit as well as in truth. Now, a word that we like to put out there because we know we have a lot of our so-called black supremacists, so they'll say, yay, yay, yay. But there's a deeper point for the spiritual brothers and sisters that go beyond, you know what I'm saying, just the carbon organic structure or go beyond just the outer racial types. We have to get to the heart of the matter, the spirit of the matter. So we had left off in the, in the last, um, in the last uh, portion, the last uh, uh, presentation on the hour of uh, temptation. And we start to do a little bit of math. Right, a little bit of math. Let's see if we can bring this up right here. Right, um, this is remember the Nibiru is also called the uh, Cementenial Shi Kokev. Right, the Cementenial 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 Shi Kokev, or the Kokev of the eighth millennium, the star of the eighth millennium. So, what we also want to um, verify or present the evidence of is that. This Nibiru sign has also been recognized from long ages ago in Ainai Ethiopic, our divine heritage, 
according to I and I divine heritage. Now, right here, this is, I think, um, Helena Lehman originally did this particular chart right here. You understand? And you've seen it before when we spoke about the menorah. Now, this is a, what they call an eight, an eight um, um, branch menorah. All right? And if you can see this clearly, it begins off in 2010, and it ends off roughly in 2018. I don't know if it was 2010 when it was done, but it begins off with 2010, and it ends up in 2018. I think it's Helena Lehman. L-E-H-M-A-N. So you can look at her. Some of her pages are very, very interesting. She makes reference to the Ethiopic Book of Enoch and Jubilees and, and, and the full range of documentation. You know, saying that many in the so-called um, uh, middle-of-the-road mainstream ignore out of um, racist and other unclean, unclean spirits. Now, in looking at this, we see where it says the Hallel, the Hallel Psalms. And we don't have option to get into the detail of this, but Bamarinya, we call this the Elilta, the, the Psalms for going up. You know, we keep talking about we have to get up to ascension rate. We're not going to use the word rapture because it's very kind of a lot of false ideas have been. Um, it's a spiritual rapture. In other words, we have to be in, in, a, in a spiritual consciousness. And you're going to notice this more and more. As the tears, right, on one hand are gathered together, you understand, and as the wheat are gathered together, you have to know your identity in Yeshua HaMoshiach, you understand, and let's bring this forward once again right here, you got to know your identity in Yeshua HaMoshiach, so you have to know the difference between Antichrist, Christos Tekawami, right, and Christos Baunet, Bemen Fesena Baunet too, in his truth, in his racial identity. But it's not the racial identity, right, on that level that saves us because he is black and we are black. You understand? Because faith without works is mot, motes, mute. The point is mute. Right? The point is mot. Mot is in the Amharic and the Ethiopic and the Afro Shemitic means death. And Mot was a Kana'anu, a Kana'anu, a Canaanite, the lowlanders, the god of the lowlanders, right, of the fallen ones, right? And it means, you know, it's called death, but there was actually a false god. You know, death is a false god, you understand? Um, but not like an idol so much, though it's made into an idol, but it's a certain thought pattern, right? It's a certain way of thinking. It's a certain spirit, too, you understand? But it's a deception. You understand? Yeshua has overcome that and has also given us that deposit, you understand, that God particle. It's through Yeshua HaMoshiach that we have that God's particle that they're looking for right now. You understand? They call it the Higgs balsam. We call it Kana balsam, but I don't know. Balsam means sweet. Kana means like a reed, a sweet reed. You understand? Um, and it says that Yeshua HaMoshiach that, that he's that sacrifice, and he is also that sweet-smelling, right, that sweet-smelling savor. You know what I'm saying? Not just the savior, you understand, but that sweet-smelling savor, right? And let's, let's see if we can bring this around as well. Well, that's another one right there, right? Sweet-smelling savor. Well, let's, let's get to this one, too, the the last or a truer, a truer depiction of the last supper. You understand? The last supper right there. But really the outstretched hands. Let's go to the outstretched hands for a moment. We need to get the outstretched hands just so we can show you. Like when you read in the Bible, it says that his hands are outstretched still. Right? His hands are outstretched still. Right? And the place he was crucified is called Golgotha or the Raskil Bota, right? And it's the place of the skull. Now you'll see that on skull and bones, they have 322. Two. If you want to understand 322, two, um, let us touch on this before we get a little bit more into um, the, the interpretation, or one very strong possible and probable interpretation of this hour, right? This particular hour 
right? This particular hour of um, of uh, temptation. What is this hour of temptation that's mentioned in um, Revelation chapter three? What does this hour signify? And we left off doing um, doing some math. Right, we left off um, doing some math, and the math was that if a day with the Lord, right, if a day with the Lord is as a thousand years, right, if a day with the Lord is as a thousand years, then what would an hour of that day be? Now, the first thing we need to um, resolve is how many hours are there in a day. Now, in our Western Gentile, or in this, in this Western Gentile. Um, misunderstanding Western Gentile mind we take a uh, day as being 24 hours no wonder people are so tired there's no shadow state you know what I'm saying there's no time to rest you know what I'm saying but actually Yeshua HaMoshiach he says that a day is he says are there not 12 hours in the day are there not 12 hours in the day and it's in the scripture look it up are there not 12 hours in the day now, so therefore, we're going to use, first of all, what Yeshua has said for 12 hours to try to figure out, well, what is a twelfth of a thousand years? If he says a day with the Lord is as a t thousand years, then from our perspective, what could this hour of temptation be? Remember, the Revelation has a lot of symbols. You know, a lot of symbols are presented to us. Now, that's why Christ says that ye worship that which ye know not, right? Ye worship that which ye know not, but we know what we worship, for salvation is of Moa and Bethesda and Negeta Yehuda. Salvation is of the Jews or Judah, the Yehudi. And what does Judah mean? Judah means the praise of Jah, Yehuda. You understand? Yehuda, the praise of Jah. Now, we had read earlier, I think it was 18, 18 19, or 19 and 20, in um, Ephesians chapter 5, about speaking to ourselves, right? About speaking to ourselves right here, verse 19 and 20, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody, right, in your heart to the Lord, to Adonai giving thanks always for all things, for all things. Not, well, I can't give thanks for that. No, it says for all things, right? To God and the Father, to he who is our true God and our Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. But see, here's where the devil come along, and here's where, where the blasphemy of the of the Israelites or the Jews, you understand? And we're speaking about black Jews. Let's understand that when we're talking about 70 A.D. Mm -hmm. The Jews said something very interesting. What did the Jews say? Well, in order to go there, let's go here right here. Now, remember what we left off with right here, these keys, these keys of the kingdom that was given to, to, to Peter. Peter represents spiritual faith. Write that down. Peter represents spiritual faith. And try to get a book. It should be out there. I think maybe we'll put it up on our website. I think we have a PDF of it. And the book is called um, The Twelve Powers, and it's by Charles Fillmore. And it kind of goes along with um, the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary as tools, you understand, as workman tools. So you need to get your workman tools. And these are some of the main, like, reference sources. You know what I'm saying? So you can properly interpret from a Hebrew or a Hebraic or a Judaic perspective. We have to recognize that Yeshua was a Yehudi or was a Judahite. Let's not forget that. He even says so. It's there in the Red Letter Bible. Like, this is Red Letter too. So he gives to Peter that spiritual faith, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So whoever is founded and grounded in that spiritual faith has the keys of heaven. Now those keys of heaven, what the Pope calls those keys on, on, on the papal on the papal insignia. Maybe to them it is. Mm-hmm. 
But that's not what Yeshua HaMoshiach was speaking of. You understand? He was speaking of the word and the proper use of the word. This is why we're teaching that we have to prune our words. This is why Rastafari, the true Rasta man, says word, sound, and power. But the true Rasta man must be founded and grounded on the teaching of his imperial majesty. You understand? On the teaching of his imperial majesty. Let's bring up that discipleship. Um, that di discipleship. Let's see where where is that right here. Is it down here? Okay, this is the black one. Let's let's take that one off for a moment and let's bring up this one right here. Okay, here we go right here. Discipleship. You see this right here? Now we touched on this in the previous vids in this series right here. We have um here's where we find ourselves in Babylon, right? In confusion. That's where we find ourselves. Oh, that's where Yeshua finds us. You understand? And we recognize what's what. You understand? In confusion. You understand? We see the truth. You understand? Like the light shining in darkness and showing that sinfulness of man. And one thing that happens to a lot of newborns, you understand? We who are newborns that in, in that inward conception, then we really start to grasp it. We start to look at all the things that we did, you know, all the negative stuff and, and even some of the, the unregeneratedness that's still in us. This is why I focus on um, Romans chapter, like on repentance. It's good to study Romans. You know what I'm saying? Romans chapter, I think, uh, uh, 6, 7, and 8, uh, those chapters right there. But um, the book of Romans in total, but basically those particular chapters, because we see Hawaii Apollos, Paul is giving us a demonstration. And no, Paul is not a false apostle. Let me just say that for my brother, for our brother, because there's some liars out there. You understand? Know who are trying to deceive you and rob you of your inheritance? You know, saying that they also they also say Yeshua and this and that and the next thing, so forth and so on. But they say that Paul was a false apostle. It's because they're not really truly, you know, truly been born. Those who say such a thing, you know, saying, and they're misinterpreting and misunderstanding the things that Paul says. Peter talks about that too. The wisdom that 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 Abba gave him in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Because you have to recognize who um, and what role Paul plays. And remember, His Majesty's testimony of Paul. So those of you Rastafari that think that Paul was a false apostle because you heard some sleight of hand doctrine or something, you really need to reconsider that based on the King of Kings. Because how can you say that His Majesty is I and I God and I and I Father, I and I God Father, He is Abba. And then you are conflicted, or then you're preaching or maintaining something that is not correct. You know what I'm saying? Your house will not be able to withstand, you know what I mean, the gates of hell. You know what I'm saying? When the winds blew, the rain, and all, all these elements. You know, we're living in this time of a lot of strange signs of these particular elements. So we find ourselves here, but the, the ground here, I'm not talking about the physical ground, but the ground here is not terra firma. You see, terra firma is Jah's eternal life over here. But in Rastaism, you understand, we get halfway, which is good. We actually get further than if we stay just in the sinful Babylonian man, you know, in Rasta. We get halfway, you understand, and the music takes us probably the furthest. You understand, the music takes us the, the longest distance. Mm -hmm. We was ministering to a sister in and really, I not give thanks because I think she's even getting it for herself. A lot of us see the music as almost like a, you know, it's like a medicine. Now, don't forget what um, Ephesians chapter 5, and please read it for yourself. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 19 to 20. Because that's a real purpose for the king's music, the king of kings music, which is, which is reggae. Even Burhana Selassie, Bob Marley says it's like heavy duty, but they're trying to take that too. You understand? The, the, the Babylonians. You understand? And because ones are not on that firm, you understand? Now, how do we get to Holy Jah? How do we get to Zion? Now, Zion, first and foremost, is not a place in the sense of place, but it's a place in the sense of grace. You over that? It's not a place in the sense of place, but it's a place in the sense of grace. Yeah, I, I, I over that myself, too, and that, that's a gift of the Holy Spirit right there. It's not a place in the sense of place. You know, we call Ethiopia the gates of Zion, and that is true. 
if we understand what these gates really are. It is the gates of Zion. But we only get over, you understand, we, we, by the cross, by the true cross of the true Christ, no other Christ, and definitely not by the Antichrist. Let's understand. Somebody may have cross in their name, you know saying, and that's good for them, you know saying, but they're not the one who, who's outstretched arms. <laughs> it's not their outstretched arms. It's Yeshua's outstretched arms. It's not, stop playing with yourself, you know saying, and playing with your eternal life as well, and also with others. We get over, you know saying, through Yeshua, Yeshua's, who is the Christ, HaMoshiach, right? And the recognition of that, remember what Peter said? Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Mm-hmm. And he is the way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. We see the triunity also, Selassie there, the way, the truth, and the life. And that halfway point is, is this. Is, is the uprightness of the teaching of his imperial majesty. You over so that halfway point we get to with Aita, you know what I'm saying? Aita is very good. You know what I'm saying? Because God wants his holy, his Isla people to, 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 to eat holy things. You know what I'm saying? And good food. Because he loves us. Just like you want your child, your children, if you love your children, to eat good food too. In, 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 in that sense. You over um Dreadlocks. Well, what's behind the dreadlocks is a symbol, but what's really behind it that many people miss is the Nazarite. You understand? And who is the Nazarene? In other words, which one of these two right here is the Nazarene? You understand? I know you've you've probably been uh, brought up on this. I can't tell you how many times I've seen this around the religious folks. You understand? But little did they know. And little did I and I know, until the grace of God came, right, that this is the 1492 guy, Caesar Bogias. You understand? And that the true image of Christ, you understand, testified in many places, you understand, the true image, the true image of, 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 of Christ is as a black man. You understand? Some say a Middle Eastern type. Mm-hmm. Well, it's clear this guy right here is not a Middle Eastern type. He is not a Middle Eastern type. And now, why is that important? Because the seed. You know what I'm There is a spiritual Israel, and there is a natural, right? Is a natural Israel. You know what I'm saying? There's a natural Israel. And we'll touch on that a little bit more as we go forward. So we just wanted to show this right here again as a teaching tool. You understand? Because when we get to Yeshua, cause notice, with our locks, we begin off, you understand, in a sense, like unto Yeshua, with the locks, with the Nazarene, the Nazarene, and Nazarite, the Netzer, the Netzer, the Netzer connection right there. You understand? But now at the center way is Christ. You understand? It's Christ is the XP. You know, if you look at this, if you were to see this in, in, in the Greek, you understand? The X is the C. You understand? Or, or, the, or the, the C and the P is the R. So the, the X is the Christos, Christos, right? That, that, that K sound, right? And then the R, right? The R is the, the P. So you might see the XP symbol in different places. The XP, you understand? Or the PX. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're not talking about PIX, but it should be your PIX. It should be your pick. Christ, the real Christ, the real one, and there is none other. You know what I'm saying? And he is the way. You know what I'm saying? Remember we touched on Matthew chapter 7, the two foundations. So everyone hears, many are called, they all hear, but only some do. Those who do, they reach. You know what I'm saying? They reach Jah's eternal life. They reach the holy Jah. They reach the Sion. And we're not talking about the place, but the grace. And through that grace, they will reach and be in the place. In fact, the place in grace is already in them. You understand? But we'll touch on that, hopefully get into that in a little more detail as well. All right? So um, where were we? So we're, we're touching right here on, um, we still have to touch on that hour of tribulation, right? The hour of tribulation. But the Holy Spirit wants us to touch on these keys. Let's touch on these keys, affirmation, denial. In fact, scripturally, it's two tribes that, that signify that. 
You know what I'm saying? That's the F-I-M was the affirmation, doubly fruitful. You understand? Know doubly blessed. Life and life more what? Abundantly. So you have life in this world and in the world to come. You know what I'm saying? Those who are born once die twice. Those who are who are who 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 um um are born twice die once. Those who are born again. You understand? Know so Peter was able to get that revelation. Let's understand this. Before the Son of Man was raised up, before he was before he was lifted up on what? The mescal, on the tree. Remember the tree. Now what does this three this three um twenty two actually mean? Some of you already know because you've been paying attention and checking it out for yourself. Let's touch on that because the gates of hell cannot prevail you know saying? The gates of hell cannot prevail against his church. Now, when we go a little bit closer, the three, we're going to the foot of the cross, right? Golgotha. They may have their own reasons, but the Holy Spirit shows us what the reason for this is. Turn your Bibles to chapter 3, verse 22 for a moment, right? Because the unseen world is going to become seen. In fact, we're seeing a lot of stuff that we've never seen before that we only heard about going on in the unseen world. It's like hell is moved, is stirred. Hell has opened her mouth. They've opened these gates. They brought in these demonic entities. People are bugging out. You understand? I mean, in the worst way of bugging out. Interesting, the Kepra, right? The Kepra, right? The Kepra is really the cherub in ancient Egypt. And Satan was what? He was a cherub. You understand? A Kepra, one who guarded one who guarded the throne. It's like the bodyguards, you understand, know, going against his majesty, you understand, know, in Ethiopia. You know, you over the Nawai brothers. And Nawai, mm, well, we'll get into that as well, you understand. Know, and just by pointing it to you, those, those who are diligent will, will find it. All they need is for one to, you know, point them in the direction. You know, the children, you know, like the Bereans, right, the Bereans. They were more noble than those in Thessalonica. And in Thessalonica, it was revealed the man of perdition, right? The man of perdition. Remember in, in Thessalonians, that's Thessalonica. It was revealed the man of perdition. And here we're seeing on your left hand is the one of the left hand, not the one of righteousness. The man of perdition will be revealed. Because remember, the Romans already were worshiping the Caesars as gods. Right? And that's what they did when he defiled the temple. They brought in a statue of the Caesar for them to burn what? For them to burn incense. For them to burn incense to um, Caesar. That was the religion. That was to say that you're a good citizen. You know what I'm saying? Worshipping Caesar was to say you're a good citizen. Like accepting the white um, or the European or Caesar Borgias who is the other Christ, as Christ also means, you understand, in this Babylonian system, you understand, in this Babylonian seclorum, that you are a good, you understand, citizen. Speaking of the black Messiah, the black Christ, you understand, is, is frowned on. They tell you it doesn't matter anymore. But as soon as you see a man with long hair and a beard that looks like the one on the left, you say, oh, he looked like Jesus. Well, have you seen Jesus? Oh, yeah, you say, I saw the picture. You understand? But it's not Jesus. It is Caesar Borgia. Borgia. It's the Borg. You're in the Borg mentality. You need to wake up. You understand? You're living in death. You understand? You need to rise. You need to look up. You understand? And see who really is the one hanging from the tree. You understand? Who really is the one on the cross with the outstretched arms. But in Genesis chapter 3, verse 22, it says, And the Lord God and Yahweh... Elohim said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. To know good and evil. Because before he only knew good, right? And now, because he knew himself. Now he knows himself and he knows the other and he gets confused about which one is which, right? And now, it says, And now least he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life. Now, if you read in your Bible, it says that, yes, Christ was crucified on the cross, but in other places it says that he hung on a tree and says, Cursed be all 
who hang on a tree. And it's saying, curse be everyone that hangeth on a tree. Why do you think they lynched the black man? You know what I'm saying? Why do you think they hung him on trees? You know, the only good nigga is a dead one. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So here in verse 22 of Genesis chapter, chapter 3, it's speaking about the tree of life, right? It says, at least he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live, what? How long? Live for a couple more years? No, live forever. You understand? So Christ was crucified in what they call the place of the skull. You understand? Or in what's known as Golgotha, right? Golgotha. Look it up in your Bible. So we see right over here, let's move this over here for a moment and look at the time. You know what I'm saying? Look at this, this, the candelabrum that has been, this is based on some work of a uh, Messianic uh, Jew, a uh, Jewish woman whose name is um, Helena Lehman, L-E-H-M-A-N. Check out some of her stuff on the internet. It's, it's interesting. It's very thought-provoking, and it might help to answer some questions here or there. You understand? But when we saw this, we said this is, this is accurate. It's something in our spirit that really... Um, told us, you know what I'm saying, and, and that is the Holy Spirit showed I and I. But of course, we trust and we verify, you know what I'm saying, we verify. And we verify that this timing is very much in time, though we might say 2012 to 2020. But see, 2020 is good vision, they call it, right, 2020. But it's not because of that only, you know what I'm saying. But first of all, what are the, the, the Hallel Psalms? Hallel means illil. Bamarinya, like the ililta, ilil, the going up, the ascension. You understand the ascension psalms, right? This is when during the high holy days, the the Israelites, the the Hebrews and the Jews, like the Ethiopian eunuch, will go up to Jerusalem, and as they make that ascent, as they're making their ascent, they would at each point of the ascent they would chant one of these Hallel Psalms. You understand? Because these, this is a prophetic timetable, you understand, for the Great Tribulation. Now, it's interesting because we can maybe now dove this with where we were in um, Revelation, right? Revelation. Let us go to Revelation chapter, chapter um, 3. Right, let's go to Revelation chapter 3. Right, Revelation chapter 3. Now, when we look at 3.22 uh, of Revelation, guess what it says? Not guess, but look what it says. It says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Remember, Christ says he will build his own church on that, on that mass, mass of Petra, but it's based on Petros, right, that little faith that... Peter showed that spiritual faith, he was able to see something, you know what I'm saying, before, in a sense, it came to pass concerning who Yeshua is, you know what I'm saying, who he really is, you know what I'm saying. Yes, Peter, Peter he, he denied and so forth and so on, but he did not betray, you know what I'm saying, he did not betray, which is a, a whole other but very related lesson. When we look at the 12 the tribes and we look at the 12 apostles or the 12 disciples, we have to actually see ourselves. You know what I'm saying? This is why some of the tools, the, the, um, the disciple tools, the workman tools, such as the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary and even um, the 12 Powers by um, Fillmore Charles.